International Political Philosophy Before 1920. Part 2. John Locke, 1632 to 1704. John Locke lived behind Hobbes for a century. Consequently, his life's defining experience was not the Civil War but the Glorious Revolution of 1688. The English king, James II of the House of Stuart, was succeeded in that year by a relatively bloodless coup led by Protestant parliamentarians who rejected the Catholic values and alliance with the monarch of France. The Glorious Revolution saw William and Mary of the House of Orange replacing the last Stuart King. As such, Locke's view of humanity and the government is much less negative than Hobbes. Whereas Hobbes sees human nature as essentially aggressive and greedy, Locke thinks of humans in a state of nature more positively. All human beings have equal rights to life, liberty, and property according to Locke. Such rights predate the establishment of governments, and if governments wish to remain legitimate in the eyes of their subjects they must maintain them. Those subjects, in effect, submit to the power of government only when their rights are secured. Subjects withhold their consent while breaching their privileges, as Parliament did when it withheld consent from King James Ill and welcomed William and Mary to take the English throne in 1688. According to Locke's theory, democracy is based on a social contract between the rulers and their subjects. If rulers, generals, prime ministers or theocrats refuse to maintain their side of the social contract by breaching their subjects' natural rights, they are automatically freed from their duty to obey government decisions. Although Hobbes sees government as something that must be forced on society to save it from the hazards of chaos, John Locke sees government as something that arises from the agreements between a community and the rulers claiming authority over them. A government that is not fairly concerned with its people cannot exist until its citizens refuse to accept its authority and withdraw their consent from the social contract according to Locke. The political order must be based on the ruler's respect for the rights of his subjects, rather than anything imposed unilaterally by the ruler. A dictator will be able to sustain an unjust order in the short run by aggression and coercion. However, only an order enjoying the subject's approval will escape constant revolt, and thus remain secure over longer periods of time. Political justice, according to John Locke, is a precondition for any sort of permanent political order. In international affairs, John Locke appears to have a strong following. His ideas on the social contract and rulers' obligations towards their subjects have contributed to a number of theories. Locke is also credited with popularizing the concept of natural rights, now known as human rights and definitely one of modern IR's key interests. Finally, Locke's view that the use of reason to learn from past mistakes will improve human nature. That seeks to solve the international problems through international cooperation between international actors. Next topic. Karl Marx. Thanks for watching.